good. Um, I would imagine that you have had offers to do a uh, series before. Mm -hmm. um, you've done stuff before, but what was it about this, now that I'm thinking about it, you've done, uh, what was it about this, though, that said, I, I, I have to make this, I want to be a part of this? Well, the long-form storytelling is very interesting to me because it's character-driven. And when I did the first thing that I ever tried in this genre, which was Wayward Pines, and um, got to work with Blake Crouch, and we talked about big ideas and movements, that was for a network and had a different kind of language and, and parameters that you have to tell the story in. So I was in my mind, I, I wanted to do, when I ever joined it again, the long-form story, I wanted to have uh, a certain palette that I was hitting and I was allowed to hit, and kind of a darkness or a weirdness. This kind of just all came to be. It has a minimalism to it that I that I truly love. It has a play-like quality to it. As as things get bigger and bigger and bigger, I want to I want to go smaller and smaller and smaller, and I use that as the kind of opposite weapon. Uh, you directed, I believe, two episodes. Yeah. How many were you thinking at one point? Man, I might want to direct the whole series. Well, I, it's, it was so rewarding to work with other directors. I picked all the directors, and, and even now as we're doing the second season, I'm picking all the directors. I watch a film, an international film, and I go, let me get on the phone with him or her and say, hey, I'm interested in this. Would you come and do an episode or two for me? This has been a great joy for me to work with other people. And, and we shoot it there. It's right in Philly in this, and I literally, we, I hang with the directors. We watch dailies together, and I said, hey, why'd you do that? Is this important? Maybe you want to try that again. And we collaborate a lot. So I felt very connected to every episode, and one in nine with episodes that I directed of first season for particular story reasons. If you've seen them, you'll, you'll know why. Um, I've seen episode. I've seen the first five. Okay. And I understand episode one. Uh, I will watch, I guess, the ninth in the not-so-distant future. <laughs> um, one of the things I really think that's cool about the series is that it's very realistic in terms of if these people were in this environment, yeah. dealing with this situation, this could be what you really would happen. Mm. Can you sort of talk about that? I love that kind of uh, slightly manic, over-the-top, humorous tone to dark humor that the show has. I really love that as a, as a thing I, in, in The Visit and Split and Glass. I'm really interested in that type of kind of storytelling, but it needs to have a reason underneath it. There's a reason the person is acting manic or hyper. Uh, and so it, it has a grounded understanding. You really enjoy the fact that everything is hyped, but there's a reason. Uh, I had to look away from the screen during the eel scene. Uh, were you on set that day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty fun. Pretty fun. Uh, they shot that for quite a while. <laughs> right. Uh, what, because uh, they, I, everyone's been very clear that no animals were yeah, harmed exactly. in the process. <laughs> everyone's been very, very. But like, I give credit. Like, it's not often I have to look away from a screen. You yeah, know? I, it was. It was. It was something everybody was very. Um, uh, nervous about how to shoot this, how to make this uh, as gruesome as we were intending it to be and make you almost faint when you're watching it. And I remember when they were shooting it and we were editing it and uh, how to make it. And once we, once we did everything that we were going to do to it, CGI and this kind of thing, to, to take away all the tricks that we did to make it look real, it was really disturbing to watch. I was in the editing room and with the editor, and every, every time we tweaked it or moved it, I would wince and watch. It was, it's, it was really fun, and yet that is how it's made. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, when, you, when you went in to talk to Apple about doing yeah. this series, how much were they saying to you, do you have a plan for three years? Do you have a plan for five years? And how much is it sort of like, we just want to be in business with you. We have faith that you know what you're doing. I think from their end, it was more open-ended. They were just very interested in me telling this story for them. For me, it was very, very important that I know where, aspirationally, where I want to go. How long will it take me to get there? In my head, I know the last episode in my head where we're going with the characters. And so that, that, those veins come all the way back to episode one. And so I can tell the actors uh, I can lean them this way, that way. They can get lost and move along the way, but they'll never lose that North Star because I'm, I'm clear about it. So for me, it's important that you get all the benefits of this long form, which is character, character, character. But if you know the end point, which is so rare, you can have that underlying um, uh, muscle structure under it that you're unconsciously being pulled towards this end point.
Well, I think also as a, as a viewer, I want to know. I like it when the creators can tell me yeah. we know where we're going. Yes. Because it's a re more rewarding experience for me to know that, you know, it's all going to tie together. I think why Tony and I work so well together is because of that. He's very kind of instinctual and tonal, and I'm very architectural. So this is where we want to get to by this, by the end of this season, and then this season, and then this is where our end goal is. We don't need to figure out everything right now, but we do know where we're going, and that will evoke in him these ideas, and we can talk about stuff that won't get us into a corner because that's what ends up happening is you do you make when in this form you can make decisions that corner you because wow that sounds interesting we're going to add this aspect there'll be a giraffe okay we'll put a giraffe on the street and then you're you're stuck and how do you well now that we have giraffes that are on the street how do we get you know so you you really if you know your north star it actually strangely gives you freedom uh yeah, I'm thinking about the polar bear in Lost right now. You know what I mean? There's, there, there's that kind of stuff. Um, one, one of the things that, I, by the way, I love Lost. I want to go on record, uh, uh, but I'm just, uh, um, uh, I lost my train of thought on that one. Um, I'm going to switch gears completely. I want to sure. ask you a separate question. Yeah. You have two movies scheduled for yes. 2021 and 2023. Yeah. Very excited when these things were announced. I have to ask you, are these two movies connected because or are they completely separate things? Completely, completely separate things. Actually, I just had two movie ideas in my head felt very strong about it. You, I, for me, there's a kind of I have all these ideas and they're in journals sometimes and they're they don't quite have the meat yet. To, so they haven't whatever that thing is, that ineffable thing that makes it. I'm ready to commit two years of my life to making this writing and directing this and then promoting it. It, some of those ideas don't have those yet. They just have to gestate a little bit. But there were two that I that that I've been thinking about that I was right away. Got, these are these two I'm going to make. And interestingly enough, there might be a third a third thing that came to me that might end up going in between these two. So wait, what? So there might be th there might be three. That's first of all, as a fan of yours, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. S second of all, can you do you have titles for any of these? Uh, the first one. Have you announced it or have no, you not? No, no, So no, you're no. not going to tell me. No, it's changed already. From the last draft that I wrote of it had a title, and I'm, and now I'm thinking of slightly altering the title in the in the sixth draft of it. Got it. <laughs> um, and my last thing for you, um, you you, how do you think these films that you're making compared to the ones you've made before? Yeah. Is there anything that is is one of them radically different? Do they have a similar like sort of night struck? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm loving this approach uh, from the visit on, which is minimal, contained, um, I own them, we take big risks, uh, tonal risks, and we, we go, try to hit that note of absurd but grounded, that, 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 that dark humor uh, moment, and deal with some complicated things and not necessarily take the audience where they're comfortable, both during it or even at the end. And, but that's all mitigated because we're making it for a responsible number and I feel like I'm being a good partner to my distributors. And I, I like that because it allows me to iterate really fast uh, in, in the making of these stories. So those films will follow that, that um, architecture of approach, of process. Uh, if, even if it's, if it's me tricking me, myself into being more dangerous, it, 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 it's working because I feel when I think about these three films that I'm thinking about, they're all weird and dark, and, and I think that they all speak to each other a little bit. So hopefully Servin will make you go, oh, wow, I, yeah, right. There was a formalism to uh, Betty Buckley's character in where she worked in Split. Oh, wow, I see all these common threads that are coming in underneath the piece. So hopefully they, they, they're good to each other, brothers and sisters. I, I got to go, but um, that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't realize. If you're making a film for a lower budget, you can do whatever the F you want. That's that's really my philosophy. Yeah, totally. Um, can't wait. Thank you so much for everything, and I, this was great. Thanks, brother.